So now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how to create an index. We have basically created some queries so far. So we've done some saving, loading, updating, and we've been able to do a test query here where we queried on various things. In this case, we had left off querying on inventory where the attack was greater than five, and that gave us some results back. But what we haven't done is used a static index. Now, when we run this test query, we're actually using a dynamic index. So I'll go ahead and run this again real quick here. And I've actually got the Raven console up here so we can see exactly what's happening. This is another way to check to see what requests are coming in. And so now you can see here that as our test passed, we got a couple of queries that went, went off here. The important one really is this get here. You can see it's hit this slash indexes slash dynamic, and we can see that it's done characters, query, inventory, attack range, and it's put in a range here. It's not important that we understand exactly what this means, but the idea here is that it's using a dynamic index. It's not using a static index, so it had to create this index. In fact, we can take a look at this index in the Raven DB Management Studio. So I've got the Raven DB Management Studio open here, and we can take a look at indexes on our index tab, and you can see there's a temp index here. So if we look at this temp index, we can click edit index here, you can see that this is the index that got created by Raven, and it was named here. And what it did is it selected, remember this is a link query, and it's okay if you don't understand this yet. This is a more complex query because we did this by the attack. But you can see basically here that this map is a link query. That it's basically looking at all the characters that exist in the database. And then from them, it's basically going through their inventory and defaulting if it's empty. So for each inventory item, it's going to select a new item. It's going to call it inventory attack, and it's going to get the attack power. So what this is effectively going to do is it's going to basically index every inventory item by its attack power, which is basically going to make it so this is searchable. Again, not so important to understand the details. This is more of a complicated index, but I just wanted to show you that you can look here if you're ever wondering if an index got created dynamically or what that index is, because maybe we want to make this a static index in our application. You can look there and see it. We can also look at some of the other indexes here. It's worth taking a look at this before we create our own index. We've got this albums by count sold. And you can see here that this is a very simple index. We're basically just doing a link or just saying from all the albums, select the count sold. It's going to index on that. So now we could query against this value using this index. You can look at albums by genre. And again, pretty similar here. The only difference here is that there's a where clause here to make sure that we're not trying to select null. And then it's selecting the genre from the album. So the it's actually going into the album.genre and organizing it that way. We can look at artists. This one's a little bit more complicated. And by the way, these are the indexes that came with that default data set. This one has a map and a reduce. And we're not going to get into the details of this yet. We're going to look at that a little bit later. But you can see, just to kind of get an idea of what a map reduce type of index looks like, one that does aggregation, is we're basically getting some values, the ID and the name. And then in this reduce, we're using these, and then we're grouping them. So this is giving us a unique result of each artist. Now, this index is a default one that comes in every database. It allows you to search on something like character to get the, the documents that match that metadata for that document type, which is basically called a tag. And then we've got a sold albums here. And again, this one is an aggregate one, where it's basically grouping up the quantity sold from an order. So I wanted to show you this before we get into creating our own indexes, so you kind of have an idea of what we're basically gonna do. We could create our indexes here. We could create a new index just like this. But the problem with that is that it's not gonna be persistent in your code. And you're not going to be able to utilize your document model, your objects and classes that are in your code that would help you to write the link query. So we're going to go ahead and do this in code, and I'll show you that next.